Welcome everybody to the Tools for the Modern Man podcast. I'm your host Pete Beskus, and today and today I'm going to be kind of rounding out my series here on you know finding your next opportunity. Um, over the last few weeks, you guys have listened to some amazing guests I've had. We've talked about resumes, we've talked about networking, we've talked about interview skills, um, really kind of the big three of things you need to be looking at when you're trying to up-level your career or trying to get into a new job, or even if you've been laid off and you're trying to refresh and you know pivot. So today I really wanted to touch base and bring up the, the last component of this puzzle, which is really confidence and resilience. And resilience for me is like one of the big ones because I've been very resilient in my, you know, career arc and in my life. Lots of things have cropped up for me, had to learn through adversity a lot of the times, had to learn through challenges, um, hated doing it. But on the other side of it, you do become wiser, you do become stronger, and you do become better able to handle the new challenges that are that are awaiting you. Um, you know, this kind of goes back to when I was 19 to 21 years old, kind of coming out of university, I uh, graduated in 1998 from engineering. And at the time, I thought it was going to be easy, just go get a job and things are going to work out well. I went on vacation after having just graduated and I'm like, okay, when I get back from vacation, I'm going to Greece for, you know, a month. When I come back, it's going to be easy. I'm going to settle in, find a job, no problem, get to work. Well, during that time, oil prices crashed and the economy up in Calgary um, tanked. So I had this list of companies that I was going to apply to. And by the time I came back, a whole schwack of them did not exist. Um, people were being laid off. Um, you know, oil price had bottomed out. And here I was, fresh out of school, no experience, no contacts, um, you know, no nothing. And I'm staring at probably one of the worst economies, you know, downturns in the last decade. And I was really just shocked. Like, I didn't know what to do. I was stuck in not knowing, you know, and then obviously you always get a lot of advice from the people around you. Oh, you should do this and you should do that. And you're not doing this well enough, or you're not doing this hard enough. And along with that chorus, there's also the chorus in your brain that's telling you the same things. You believe it. And that is, I think, one of the hardest things to overcome and to become resilient against. One is the negative talk and the negative um, perceptions, criticisms, which you know I know personally keeps mostly from myself. Become, that's where it comes from. And I remember 13 months of grueling unemployment. Um, you know, I was working at my parents' restaurant. Um, I was working, you know, kind of just keep myself busy trying to apply to any job I could find. Um, and it was futile. I got so many rejections, so many rejections. I remember um, I used to joke about the PFO letter, the please F off letter, you know, which is basically like, we don't want what you have, or you don't have anything that we want. And it was really, um, it was really sobering, you know, it was really kind of depressing, but you know, I had to just keep going, keep going, keep going. That was very early on in my career, right? I didn't have a network. I didn't have um, a body of work to lean on or strengths to even identify strengths or what I'm good at, what I'm not good at. I had really, I was a blank slate. You know, those were some of the negatives. Some of the positives were I didn't have um, a mortgage. I didn't have a family depending on me. I didn't have the stresses that you have when you're older and you say you lose a job. I didn't have that that real sense of urgency that you have when you're when you're older. Because of that, I could afford to take my time, even though I felt pressure, you know, to find something. My other friends, I think I was the only one who wasn't working. It was me. All my other friends that had jobs, everybody else would be going back to school, doing all those things. And it kind of came to a head one day. I remember this story. I was working at my parents' restaurant, and it was the end of the lunch shift. I think I've told the story to my friends before. It was a pivotal moment for me where I was washing, hosing down dishes, you know, I'm a PhD in dish pig in uh, dishwashing and I'm hosing down dishes. And one of my dad's smart ass friends comes up and he's like, Hey Pete, uh, you should take that engineering degree and frame it and put it above the dishwasher for all the good it's done you. And that really pissed me off. And it really kind of helped to reignite a fire because I don't know, you know, sometimes anger, sometimes, um, you know, that chip on your shoulder can help to drive you, you know, drove Tom Brady, 
Um, it's driven so many professionals to achieve, right? And I think it's what helped to give me some grit to keep looking and keep ask, talking to people and to keep asking questions and keep putting myself in a position to find opportunities. And I, you know, I think a lot of what we've talked about in the last few weeks is really about finding those opportunities, but putting yourself in the position for when the opportunity comes for you to be able to take it. Um, I was talking with one guy and he kind of said something that irked me a bit, which was the, oh, well, I'm just hoping, you know, ho I hope something's going to come up. I hope this. And hope isn't a strategy. For all of you out there listening right now, it's good to have hope, but it's not a strategy. What is a strategy is going out and being intentional and being present and going out there and talking to people and always looking for the opportunities where you can, um, where you can shine, right? How can you help? How can you keep flexing those muscles that you have? How can you keep putting a big spotlight on your strengths and where you stand out? How can you align yourself with someone and the problem that they're facing? How can you um, be the solution, right, to that problem that is out there? Because it doesn't matter in, in any economy, in any up or downturn, there are still businesses, there are still opportunities, and there's still ways for you to capture those opportunities. It just takes one, right? And I think this is where that resilience comes in. And that ability to keep taking a punch and keep moving forward because you don't need 10 job offers. You need one. You don't need 10 girlfriends. You need one that's a good one. You know, and it's very much like you don't need 10 to put a bid on 10 houses. You just need to put one on, get an accepted offer on one. And that's, I think, a very important thought and mindset to have when you're going into these scenarios is find the right one, find the one that works for you. Um, and if you need to use a stepping stone, if you need to kind of pivot from one and then go to another, we'll keep that in mind because once you have that opportunity, what are you going to do next? Are you just going to sit back, you know, wipe off your brow and go, I'm, I'm set because that's, you know, you know this and I know this, that's not how life works. You're never just set. It's never over. You're always positioning yourself for the next opportunity, learn, grow, optimize, and then look for something else. And I know a lot of people are like, that's exhausting and that's so tiring. And I don't want to always be on this treadmill, but you're on a treadmill, right? You could be right now, if you're unemployed and you've been sitting around for six months or 13 months, like I was, um, guess what? That's a treadmill. It doesn't feel good. It, you know, it, it grinds on you and you can be in one type of grind or another type of grind. It's your choice. And so when you look back and you, you know, kind of, look at the whole body of work that I put out there, it lets it sets the stage, it lays the foundation that you need to get yourself into the position. But once you get that position, what are you going to do next? How are you going to grow? How are you going to become that next version of yourself? Pick up those new tools, those new strengths so that you can shine. And anytime you're in a, you're in a situation where you want a new opportunity, you can go out and flex that muscle and get that new opportunity. Um, I hate to say it, it's as easy as that, but what sucks is the interim. It's the, you know, showing up every day when it sucks. How do you become resilient? How do you become confident? Well, confidence comes from doing something over and over and over again. That's how you build resilience, just by doing it over and over and over again. Um, so when you wake up and when you think to yourself, okay, well, what am I going to, how am I going to be resilient today? I think one question you can say, well, how can I, show off one of my strengths today? How can I do something that will move me forward one inch? How can I have, what conversation can I have today? Who do I need to talk to today? How can I help out today? Those are all empowering, intentional ways of thinking and moving forward. And if you need help, who can help me today? Can I reach out and get some help from somebody? I'm stuck. How am I going to get unstuck? Where's that lifeline going to come from? For me, at the end of the 13 months, the lifeline came from a professor, you know, a professor of mine from school um, was just looking for, you know, entry level engineers and for a friend of his. And that's how I got my first break. And guess what? It sucked. It's a terrible gig. And I didn't fit in with it. It didn't align with me. It wasn't glamorous. It sucked. And I did that for almost a year and a half. And then I found another opportunity. And then after that, I found another opportunity. And I found another opportunity until I found 
fell into an opportunity that aligned with me. And then I started to see where I excelled. And I just kept leaning into those places and following and chasing the places that I was good. And when I felt like I had plateaued, I would move on. And sometimes I moved on to great places and sometimes I moved on to duds. But I learned to keep moving forward because I had spent months and months and months not doing anything at all. And I never wanted to put myself in another position where I would have some smart ass old guy come and tell me, you know, go and put your degree up on the wall for all the good it's done. Right. So I don't know if that, if that resonates with you, man, that triggered me so much, but again, I keep going back to it and I'm 47 years old and I've been doing this for over 25 years. And, um, I can still remember that day and it still fires me up to not be that person who just sits back and, you know, shelves it, you know, just mails it in. So if you enjoyed those episodes I am doing right now with my business. I am doing free um, resume audits for people very much based off of what I talked about in the podcast, um, just kind of going through and highlighting, you know, things that you need to fix, things that, how are you going to optimize this? Like what impression are you making? Um, also planning on hosting a workshop. So if you're interested in being a part of that workshop, you can always DM me, email me at petebestest.com or on LinkedIn or on Instagram or on any of the places. Um, I will keep a list and when I'm ready, you know, when I've got everything lined up, I'll send you the dates. Um, but again, take advantage of the people around you, like take advantage of people who will look at your resume, take advantage of someone who will help you prep for an interview, take advantage of someone who just wants to sit down and, and brainstorm ideas of where you're going to go next, right? That's what coaches do. That's what strategists do. That's what leaders do. Um, and if you're looking to make a pivot, you're looking to make a change, like I said, reach out. Hope you guys are doing well. It's the first day of spring where I am. It's no ruse if you're uh, celebrating that. I know my wife's family is, so we get to go celebrate no ruse. And uh, I wish you all a great week. See you all next week on Tools for the Modern Man.